Hello and welcome to Frost Over the World. Later in the programme, the Zimbabwe election. The rising cost of food. Best-selling author Louis de Bernier. Tibet and China. And the latest from the US election. But first of all, health. Yesterday, the World Health Organization released what appeared to be a routine statement about four brothers in Pakistan who'd all contracted the H5N1 strain of bird flu. But the analysis went on to say that three of the four had no known contact with sick or dead poultry. Their only contact was with each other. And so the report concludes, what we have here is an albeit limited case of human-to-human -human transmission of bird flu the mutation that, of the disease which the world has been fearing. And I'm joined now by Dr. Margaret Chan, the Director General of the World Health Organization. Uh, she's been called the woman who saved the world from SARS, and she's responsible for leading the world on global health matters, and we welcome her now. Margaret, welcome. And let me ask... Well, uh, thank you very much, Sir David. Thank you. And... Um, Starting, starting straight away with the, the overnight story about the bird flu and it being passed from person to person, is that a new development or one you've seen before? Is it an important development? Well, Sir David, that clearly this is an important development. And the uh, avian influenza, uh, people call it bird flu, caused by H5, H5N1, has been with us for many years. Right. As a matter of fact, you know, the first incident happened in 1997, and I had the personal experience to deal with it when I was working in Hong Kong, China. Now, the event that you mentioned happening in Pakistan, uh, you know, clearly avian influenza is still an animal disease now, affecting the poultry in many countries. But, you know, we do continue to see human cases affected. Now, the situation in Pakistan is concerning is because we are seeing limited human-to-human -human transmission. Every opportunity we give the virus to cause human-to-human -human transmission, we give the virus an opportunity to change. That's what we don't want to see. So we are keeping a, a very close watch on the development of H5N1 uh, since 2003, when this uh, come back in a big way, affecting many countries, not only in Asia, it has gone beyond the Asian focus. It has affected Europe, Africa, and many other parts of the world. So in a nutshell, uh, we should not let our guard down. We must, you know, follow the track and the movement of this virus. And would, we would not wish to give it a chance to cause the next pandemic. Right, and tell me something that's so interesting what you're saying there about the virus. How does a virus change, as you, as you put it, and how do we stop it changing? Well, put it simply, I mean, uh, influenza virus is one of the most treacherous virus. It's unpredictable. It can change in different ways. For example, if, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, H5N1 at this point in time is, you know, uh, uh, an animal virus. But if we give them the opportunity to mix with an influenza virus causing human infection, for example, H3N2 or H1N1, the ones that we are seeing, if they come together and change, that's one way they could cause the next pandemic. Now, another method is the virus on its own take a very long process of evolution and become out of the sudden, out of the blue, can ignite the next pandemic. And the challenge for all of us working in public health is, it's difficult to predict when the next pandemic will occur and what mechanism or what influenza strain or new virus will ignite the next pandemic. So, so the uh, notion of continuing tracking by disease surveillance, by vigilance, is the best way to really sound early warning so that the world can come together and work together to deal with the, uh, you, know, you know, outbreak should it occur. And taking something like, for instance, uh, SARS, Margaret, um, 
you have a yes. continual juggling act to do, don't you, between on the one hand uh, getting people ready for the danger and expending money on special drugs and so on, maybe alarming people but preparing, and then on the other hand the danger that if nothing happens you will be attacked for having uh, wasted money and so on. How do you strike the balance on something like SARS? This is an extremely important question, Sir David. Let me put it this way. Uh, this is what we call the public health dilemma. Clearly, we understand that the here and now, we have problems like HIV AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. People are advocating we should invest more money there. And of course, you know, maternal and child health are also important. But on the other hand, should we or should we not invest to prepare you know, uh, the system to deal with new and emerging infections. Our take, and also from previous experience, is that, you know, a system that is better prepared will reduce the damage. Now, given the new developments and the movement since 2003 with H5N1, and, and I think there is consensus in the global community that we need to invest to in uh, pandemic preparedness. And, and I have to, you know, emphasize all the investment in pandemic preparedness, by that I mean, uh, you know, the surveillance system, uh, improving the capacity of the laboratories to do risk assessment and tracking the virus will not go to waste because we call this as a generic system whereby they can come and serve uh, communities. They can activate a plan to deal with other outbreaks. And that's that's very interesting. And what, what would you say, um, of all the, the various health threats in the world today, um, which you have to manage or try and manage, what would you say is what you regard as the greatest threat to health in the world today? Which of the things we've been talking about or something else? Well, I mean, you know, I can give you a couple of, you know, important issues. You know, pandemic influenza is actually, you know, one thing that we worried a lot. And that's why we should not let our guard down. But having said that, you know, big problems like, you know, HIV AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, maternal health and child health. All these, we group them together in under the Millennium Development Goals, which heads of governments and heads of states in the year 2000 commit themselves to improve the health of their people by attacking, attacking these diseases. So these are important issues. Thank you very much indeed, Margaret. Thank you for that review. We've been delighted to have you with us and uh, your job is literally a matter of life and death and uh, we wish you all the best with it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir David. In a moment, Zimbabwe. Don't go away during this incredibly short break.